My name is Eric Rosenbach. I'm the co-director of the Belfer Center for Science and International Affairs here at the Harvard Kennedy School. At the Kennedy School, I teach classes in cyber policy and right now am co-leading a project called Defending the Digital Democracy. I'm working closely with Robbie Mook, Hillary Clinton's former campaign manager, and Matt Rhodes, Mitt Romney's former campaign manager. And we're working on a project to try to bolster the cyber defenses of our election systems and our campaigns. Prior to coming to the Kennedy School, though, I worked as the Pentagon Chief of Staff at the Department of Defense, and earlier had been in charge of all things cyber at the Department of Defense for about seven years. So I was the so-called cyber czar at the Pentagon as Assistant Secretary of Defense. And in that role, I watched the threats to our nation very closely, the cyber threats in particular, and over the last year of the Obama administration, carefully watched what the Russians were doing to try to interfere with our democratic processes. So today, I want to talk to you a little bit about the nation state threat to our democracy and our election systems, some ways that we can mitigate that threat, and some things to think about down the road in terms of protecting our democracy from nation state attack. I wanted to start by talking to you about nation state threats to our election system and our democratic way of life, in particular when it comes to cyber threats. So it's important to remember that I believe our response to the Russian effort to interfere with our elections in 2016 was not muscular enough. This worries me because when you think about deterrence, and remember deterrence is the perception of the bad guys and whether or not they can get away with attacking the United States, that our deterrence posture was not strong enough, which will lead not just the Russians, but a whole host of other nations and bad guys to try to attack our election systems and our democracy again. So I wanted first to tell you a little bit about the Russians and some of the things they've done in the past and what they may do down the road. I've been watching the Russians and what they do in cyber and information operations for almost two decades now. I started as an intelligence officer in Germany a long time ago, focusing on the Russians. And what they're doing with cyber operations and info ops is not actually new. They've done this historically throughout the Cold War as the Soviet Union, where they tried to undermine trust in the democracy in the United States by exploiting fissures in society and by manufacturing information that they thought could break down the democratic system. What is new, however, is this new hybrid toxic mix of cyber attacks where they'll steal information, manipulate it, release it, and then amplify it throughout a social media cycle. That's something that's new and something that we need to learn how to deal with as a democracy, in particular when it relates to our campaigns and our election systems. But the Russians aren't the only ones who have the capability and the intent to do this. As I said, my fear is that other nation states will see what the Russians did to the United States in 2016 and also go after our democracy. The nation that I am most apprehensive about is North Korea. The North Koreans in particular over the last several years have developed a very potent cyber capability. So you'll probably remember, for example, that they conducted the first destructive cyber attack against the United States when they attacked Sony Pictures Enterprises and destroyed all of their networks. The North Koreans have a good reason to try to go after our democratic system because that's not the way North Korea runs. And in any escalation of tensions, they may be looking for a way to reach out and attack the United States. I'm also concerned about the Iranians. The Iranians have a long history of using cyber operations against the United States and our allies. So, for example, the Iranians conducted a destructive cyber attack against a large energy firm in Saudi Arabia several years ago. Also, they attacked our financial services sector, where they did a large denial of service attack against many of the America's largest banks. So the Iranians are another group that could come after our democratic systems. It's sometimes hard to think when you're in the position of an election official or someone who cares about the democratic system of governance that these nation states are actually going after our elections. But they have both the intent and the capabilities. The capabilities I just spoke a little bit about, but what would their actual intent be? I wanna make something very clear. I don't think that the nation states actually are always concerned about picking one candidate over another. Their real intent 
is to undermine trust in the democratic system that we have here in the United States. It's really important to recognize that because when we start to think about how to mitigate the risk of a cyber attack from a nation state, it's upholding that trust in our election systems and our democratic way of life that should dominate our response. Now I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the targets that some of these nation states would go after in order to undermine trust and confidence in our election systems. There are three primary areas that you need to focus on. First is the technology itself associated with the election systems. Second are the processes that you put together in order to have a, an election that garners the trust and confidence of the American public. And third is the information environment surrounding a campaign and an election. So first, let's talk a little bit about the technology. As you know, election systems and electronic voting machines have grown dramatically over the past decade. With the growth in those machines also has grown a new vulnerability. Like any piece of information technology, electronic voting machines have software vulnerabilities that advanced nation states can exploit and try to manipulate. So when we talk later about how to mitigate some of these risks, that will be one of our primary concerns. It's also important to remember, however, that voter registration databases are another specific target that nation states would go after because of the integral role that it plays in the election process. The election processes themselves are something that a nation state would target because if they are able to disrupt the process, it could undermine Americans' confidence in the overall system. Here's an example. So, if, for example, a nation state like the Russians was able to disrupt the connectivity between an electronic voting machine and the tabulation equipment and the eventual process that allowed someone to report the results, that could lead to a miscommunication about what the overall results would be. Even if, for example, they couldn't hack the individual database itself or the machine, being able to disrupt that process undermines confidence in the overall election. Finally, it's really important to remember that the Russians in particular, but some of these other nation states, will look at trying to disrupt the information environment around an election. Imagine, if you will, it's election day in November in a battleground state, and suddenly on social media through Facebook, Twitter, or maybe even normal news channels, you hear that the polls are closing four hours early because some of the election technology is not working well, and you'll no longer be able to vote. This may not be true, but just pushing that type of information out to the public could repress the number of voters who go to those voting polls and impact the overall outcome of the elections. The Russians are very, very sophisticated in working information operations in the United States in particular right now, so that's something we need to watch out for down the road. I've talked to you a little bit about the nation state threats and some of the reasons that they would want to attack our election systems. I also talked to you about some of the things that they would target when they were going after our election systems. Now I want to tell you a little bit about some of the things you can do to mitigate the risk of a cyber attack against election systems and our broader democratic processes. There are three areas. First, there's technical cybersecurity steps that you should take that will improve the overall defense of your information technology. Second of all, you need to have resilient processes that will allow you to react to an attack in a way that will improve and increase the confidence in the overall results of the election. And finally, you need to have a good incident response plan that allows you to communicate clearly with the public if there's been an attack. So let's go through these real quickly. First of all, the technical aspect of cybersecurity is important. However, it's really basic things that you can do that will improve your overall level of cyber defense. So for example, just making sure that you have the most up-to-date software for your voting machines or for your voter registration database. Also making sure that you have the right type of cybersecurity software in place is important. Those basic type things can really improve your overall posture when it comes to cyber defense. Now recently, I've spent a lot of time with a lot of the states who are working on election security, and I've been really impressed with their ability to design resilient systems. This comes natural to people working on state elections because they're used to bad things happening. A voting machine going down, a process not working, someone's computer going out. 
That's really important also when it comes to thinking about cyber defense against an attack by a nation state, because if you can improve your overall level of resilience, it will mean that the bad guy's level of attack is less likely to succeed. That's a good thing. So keep doing what you're doing there, but keep in mind that nation states may go after you in a more aggressive way and you rehearse and go over this multiple times. Finally, it's really important that you have a good incident response plan that almost accepts the fact that there may be a hack or that there may be a penetration or some type of compromise of your election systems. And in that case, in today's era, it almost always leaks out or becomes known publicly. And you need to think about how to communicate this to the broader public in a way that will reinstill confidence in the overall outcome of the election. You can only do this by rehearsing and having a plan in place. You won't be able to do that on the fly. So if you're able to think about these three things of risk mitigation, which are the technical cybersecurity, designing resilient processes and rehearsing those, and having a strong incident response plan, you'll increase your overall level of deterrence against a nation state actor. That's something that may sound a little bit strange if you're there, even a local election official, but what you do there on the front lines of an election will improve the nation's overall deterrence posture against a nation state actor. These seemingly simple things are very important to our collective defense against these nation state actors and bad guys who want to attack our democratic way of life. So the cyber threats to our election systems are real. Because of the less than muscular response, to the Russian attacks on our election in 2016, we definitely should expect not only the Russians, but other nation states and bad guys down the line to attack our democratic way of life and go after our election systems. But this isn't something that we need to be completely pessimistic about. We don't need to throw our hands up in the air and think that we'll not be able to deal with it. This is not something that should divide us along partisan lines. Quite the contrary. This is an attack on America, we need to come together, and one of the most important parts of this is that our election officials understand that they can mitigate the risk to this and that our democracy will continue down the road. There are also some other positive signs. We're working together in a bipartisan way up here at the Harvard Kennedy School with Hillary Clinton's former campaign manager, Mitt Romney's former campaign manager, working closely with the tech sector to bring new expertise and some new tools so that we can continue to mitigate the risk of an attack like this. So I wanna thank you, election officials, at the national, state, and even local level for what you're doing. You may have never really thought about it this way, but when it comes down to it, you're soldiers on the front line of our national security. The bad guys are coming after us, and the things that you do will protect us as a nation and play a key part in upholding the democracy. Thank you for what you're doing.